Hello friends, uh, welcome again. Uh, now we'll see the finite element formulation for 2D problems. These are the general steps involved in finite element analysis, which is applicable for obtaining the finite element formulation for 1D, 2D or anything or 3D problems. If you, and the procedure remains same. Only thing is the type of element, shape functions, stress strain relations, these things changes. But it goes through the same procedure. <coughs> so we'll see step by step one and we'll try to obtain. So till here, because this 2D problem, the equations are, are very large. So we may not be able to go to the till this end to obtain. But somehow we'll try to cover up to this. And um, there we'll try to find out what is the Jacobian uh, of transformation. Because next part is uh, the procedure remains same. Only the number of equations, handling the number of equations, it becomes uh, difficult. So here the first step is the select the element type and discretize. Means if you want to uh, use any uh, 2D domain, there we can um, either use the triangular shape elements to discretize or we can use the rectangular element shapes to discretize that particular domain, 2D domain. And we are considering here the plane stress uh, condition. So here we are using the uh, element shape type that is the four node rectangular element. And we are discretizing this, the domain by using the um, this element. So we will see for one such element and second step is the select approximation function for nodal variable. Nodal variable uh, here it is a displacement for structural type of problem nodal variable is always displacement. So again um, we have to approximate the um, displacement within the element by using some approximation function. We select this as a polynomial function and uh, after uh, this already we have seen we select the linear polynomial here and if we select the linear polynomial so this u displacement is approximated by using this linear polynomial so by putting the conditions at node 1 2 3 and 4 we this will results in the shape functions these things are already we have seen so once we select the obtain the shape functions then we can approximate the u we can write the displacement u in general as well as v in general uh, in x y uh, in x and y directions respectively so now <coughs> third step that is the define constitutive relations that is in that strain displacement relation and second part is a stress strain relation now here um, we have selected the uh, problem type as a plane stress problem so what is the strain displacement relation this also we have seen so epsilon x epsilon y and um, gamma x y will be equal to the this dabai um, u by dabai x dabai v by dabai y dabai u by dabai y plus dabai v by dabai x basically we are relating the strain with respect to the um, displacement so this is the plane stress problem that we have already seen that uh, load is applied in the in uh, x y plane there is no load perpendicular to this plane that is there is no load in z direction now uh, if this u is a function of uh, x y then we can directly differentiate this this also we have seen and we got the uh, strain displacement matrix but here now uh, the element we have here coordinates we have returned these are the natural coordinate system means we have the shape function here in terms of the natural coordinates so because of this directly this we cannot differentiate n1 with respect to the x because n1 n2 n3 these are the functions of what these are the function of zeta eta so here we can see u is equal to uh, actually this is for the triangular element uh, i'm wrong here uh, but let it be we are not going to use this um, so u is a n1 u1 n2 u2 that dash up to the n4 u4 means here dab by n1 by dab by x you cannot directly differentiate because n1 is a function of zeta eta because we have uh, written the coordinates for the four node triangular in terms of the natural coordinate system that is in a local 
coordinate system. So here this we cannot use because n1 is not a function of x but it is a function of zeta eta. Then what we have to do? We have to then transform that is just now we have seen in the previous earlier videos that transformation of coordinate from one coordinate system to the another coordinate system. So here parent element we have obtained the uh, we have written the coordinate for the parent element as a natural coordinate and here we want to obtain in terms of the global coordinate system means we have to transform from the local coordinate to the global coordinate. So for that purpose we use a chain rule of differentiation means here if you separate so this equation this equation is just separated in the two matrices. If you multiply this matrix with this matrix, you will get the same equation. So just to uh, facilitate it uh, further, uh, we have separated these terms. Um, now if you see dy by u by dy by x here, so by using the chain rule of differentiation, we can write dy u by dy by zeta because we can differentiate this u with respect to the zeta. Why? Because u is a function of n1 and which is function of zeta eta. So this is possible. That's why we are using the chain rule of differentiation. So dy by u by dy by zeta is equal to dy by u by dy by x, dy by x by dy by zeta plus dy by u by dy by eta plus dy by y by dy by zeta. Means these terms are, these terms are there. Dy by u by dy by x, it is here. We want to obtain this from this chain rule of differentiation. Similarly, we can write for the eta, okay, same differentiation we can obtain. So, these two equations, we will just write in a matrix form, okay. So, we will write these equations in a matrix form, that is dy by u by dy by zeta plus dy by u by dy by eta plus this, we can write. So, this we are taking common dy by u by dy by x here and dy by u by dy by y. So you will get dy by x by dy by zeta, dy by y by dy by zeta. Similarly this dy by u by dy by eta. So these terms again, this term is again is taken here. So you will get this. Means these two equations we have just written in a matrix form. Now similarly it can be written, just it is written for u. We can write the chain rule of differentiation for the v also. That is the displacement v which is in y direction and we will get the same equation. So you will find that this relation and this matrix and this matrix will be the same. So what is this called? This, this is called as the Jacobian of transformation. Basically this Jacobian matrix is relating the uh, x y domain with the zeta eta domain. So means we are relating the uh, x y coordinates with the zeta eta coordinates and this is nothing but that, that scale factor. Jacobian indicates the scale factor. Jacobian is the scale factor. Or we can just write this j is equal to, we are using the compact notations here. So this term will denote simply as a j11, this term will denote as a j12. This will be a will denote as a j21 and this term will denote as a j22. So instead of writing these complete equations, we just write j11, j12, j21 and j22. So it is written the same equation is from previous or because we want to find out this. If you observe in the last equation, this we have to replace this with the zeta eta because our shape functions are in terms of the zeta eta. So we will take this on this side, dy by u by dy by x, dy by u by dy by y. So this is the inverse. So this, we have to take the inverse of this matrix. So this will be a inverse multiplied by this. Similarly for v, and if you combine these two equations, we will get the complete. So all these dy by u by dy by x, dy by u by dy by y, this will be on the left hand, right, left hand side and this complete matrix Jacobian, inverse of Jacobian matrix will be on this 
and this is dy by dy by z. Now we have this equation, right? We have this equation, Hadley's equation, and this is there all u and v displacement. That is differentiation of this with respect to x. So this we will call this as equation one. We will call this as equation b. So by combining equation one a and b, we can write means this will replace this. Okay, just note down this will replace with this. Okay, this will replace with this. So we'll get. Here, so right, we got it here. That equation. Now we know this uh, u and v displacements. They are expressed in terms of this um, because u is equal to n one v one, n two v two, n n three u three, and n four u four. Similarly for v. And what are the n one, n two, n three? These are the shape functions, right? These are the shape functions in terms of the natural coordinate system. So then you will be differentiating. So you will differentiate. You will obtain this. How you will obtain this? You will differentiate this with respect to the zeta. So d by u by z by zeta. You will get the d by n one by d by zeta into u one plus d by n two by d by zeta u two plus d by n three by d by zeta u three and d by n four by d by zeta u four. So you will get the one equation. Again, if same equation, you will differentiate with respect to the zeta. You will get the second equation. Then this v, you will be differentiating with respect to the zeta. You will get the one equation, and you will be differentiating with respect to the eta. You will get the another equation. So this u and v, you will be differentiating with respect to the zeta and eta respectively, one by one. And four such equations, simultaneous equations, you will get. And you can write these equations in terms of a Matrix. You can write that uh, equations in matrix form, and you can separate this u1, u2, u3. Uh, you can write in a column vector. So you will get like this. So all these four equations, right? You are writing this alternatively because here we are writing u1, v1 alternatively. So you will get these four equations: one, two, three, and four. By differentiating this with respect to First zeta, then with respect to with eta, then again differentiating this with respect to the zeta, and differentiating this with respect to the eta. So four such equations, and separating the u one, all these terms are separated after differentiating because this will remain constant there when we differentiate it, and these terms are taken in the column vector here. Okay, all these terms are taken here. So you got this equation, right? Now coming to the previous equation. Now this we have we had written here. You remember this. This is completely replaced by this equation multiplied by this, and this J inverse is already it is there. Now you can see this matrix, and this is substituted. You got this, which is the differentiation of shape function. So this complete matrix, this complete matrix. After multiplication, if you multiply this, all these matrices, so you can see this will become very huge, large equation. So this matrix, so I am not going to multiply it here, but I am just showing the process. So this matrix is called as the strain displacement matrix. Just like for triangular element, we have seen in terms of the Cartesian coordinates. Only because of the we are writing um, this in a uh, we are writing the um, shape functions in a natural coordinate. Then we are converting this into the global coordinate system. That's why the this Jacobian of transformation has come there, which is a scale factor. So that's why these two additional matrices are there. So we got this is a strain displacement matrix, and this is as a displacement vector. So this way we have found out the strain displace strain. Matrix in terms of this strain displacement matrix and the displacement vector. So in general, or in compact notation, we can simply write this as a epsilon is equal to p q. That is epsilon matrix and q matrix. So we'll continue this further. Just uh, few points are left, and we'll see in the next video.